Uh oh, I found a really big problem on the boat, like a structural problem. Here, this is the knee that holds the shroud. It, uh, you see this here? It's loose. This whole, this whole part should be attached to the hull behind it. That is not good. Four years ago I crewed on other people's boats across the Pacific Ocean and learned the basics of sailing. After I had to stop building my cabin in Spain last year, I decided to return back to the ocean. That was the second time I docked a boat in my life. We made it! So we're going to check in now in Cuba. Apparently the whole island is closed, only the marina is open because of COVID. So they're building a new bar here next to the marina that's that's gonna be gorgeous nice and i guess the marina office is over there no that's a shop maybe over there marina Cayo largo chicken goes really easy i'm not done yet but now we're going to the boat because uh, we need to seal the drone because you're not allowed to fly the drone here so he just told me now it's high season and normally it's full with party boats and people and now there's one charter boat that's it and they're gonna leave today and I know I am the only foreigner traveler on this whole island got a lot of officials with me limonada parked nicely there and made it all the way to Cuba I am proud of you hmm. DJI Mavic Pro. Ah, muy, muy viejo. Oye, no hace falta. No hace falta la presenta. So the only other charter boats, Ukrainians invited me on their boats. Then why? <laughs> hey! Hey! Budmo! Budmo! Hey! Budmo! Hey! Budmo! 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 Hey! 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 It's uh, oh, that's good, bro. It's good. It's good. It's good. Lobster. And they give me this lobster. Thank you, guys. This is amazing. They just made a meal for me. Wow. Thank you, guys. This is hospitality and like amazing. Thank you. I just got two more. This is crazy. So they are leaving. I met them in like two hours before they left. That was just amazing. People can be amazing. And they gave me a long sleeve shirt. After a week at sea, everything is disgusting and smelly. Since I'm the only uh, tourist, I decided uh, to use this opportunity to uh, lay everything out, wash it and let it dry by the sun. Uh, one a week ago that Dirk uh, went home um, shot out in the two videos ago and uh, it's just also now that uh, we have time to you know when you're sailing there's so much going on and there's uh, things breaking and the boat goes from left to right uh, you, you don't have time to you know relax or, or things don't come in and now here now I'm really like alone and um, doing everything by myself and yeah it's I have it uh, difficult with it I miss her a lot okay let's continue cleaning the boat so this is my water strainer for my um, raw water intake and as you can see it's really small and because it's so small it gets stuck every time so if you ever put one on, put a bigger one on. Every every two weeks I need to clean that. I'm just taking my alternator apart to take it out because... Oh, now you don't hear it, but <laughs> here's a little screw that came out and that's against... squeaking against this and I, I have to address that. Of course, while trying to get it loose, this bolt broke. I don't think I'll be able to get it out here, so... 
this is not smart to do this here. I'm gonna need some professional help with this. I'll put it back. I retensioned the belt. I uh, cleaned the water strainer, added half a liter oil, um, checked the gearbox oil, checked the antifreeze. I think that was it. So the engine is good to go again. All right, limonada is desalted and about to be ready to go again. Ah, nice clean bed. I look forward to sleep tonight. Been here for two and a half days now. Uh, clean everything. Added a little bit of the video of, of uh, the trip. And now it's time to go on anchor. Damn it, I'm stuck again. Ugh. Let's try to get off with a sail. Well, my first time anchoring alone and I hit a sandbank. Great. I was uh, free within a minute or so. Thank God, because there's no one around. Huh. Two charter boats just arrived from Israel and they invited me to dinner, that's nice. So we're having fish and vegetables and thank you guys so much for inviting me on your boat. That is like really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what is this? Tahina. 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 Thank you guys for the Cuban experience. Gusto, come on all. Uh oh, I found a really big problem on the boat, like a structural problem. Here, this is the knee that holds the shroud. It, uh, you see this here? It's loose. This whole, this whole part should be attached to the hull behind it. That is not good. Here on the aft side, a deck which is broke. Must be because of friction or something. I, I put some sealant over it now. I can just push it in. Must be because of friction maybe, uh, because of the, the knee for the chain plate that let loose. I'll head to Shen Fuegos next, which is mainland. This is an island. And there I can um, hopefully get some basic repairs done. Like I have to fix that fiberglass, that knee that's broken because you know that's 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 super dangerous. I need to I need to address that. Now I'm going quickly in the water just to check around the boat that everything is okay, that nothing is stuck around the prop or something. And we're on the way again. 
uh, my autopilot doesn't want to work anymore. I mean, it, it works, but then it sends me in the wrong direction every time I put it on. So uh, I think it's going to be a one and a half day of hand steering. It's the way it is. I'll uh, try to fix it in the next port. Pilot started working again after a couple of hours, so uh, and I cooked some dinner. Doing four and a half knots, about faster than expected. Um, close hauling with the jib. There's one boat coming my way. Yeah, still need to do about 60 miles. Arriving tomorrow morning, if it, well, how it looks like right now. faster as expected. I was expecting to be here well, around now, around uh, 9 or 10 in the morning or between now and 4 p.m. Uh, but I already arrived a little before here at uh, 1 in the morning so I slept a little bit. Uh, now I have to do 8 mile to go into the marina. Just arrived, I am the only one here in the anchorage. I wanted to drop anchor, but apparently I first have to go in the dock to check in. So let's practice more docking skills. Apparently here in Anchorage, it happens. It's quite a bit known here that sometimes things get stolen and you know, you don't want to leave your boat for too long unattended and I'm alone and I do want to go into the town. So uh, it might be good to just to put it in the marina for just a few days. It's $21 per day in marina, $9 in Anchorage. Here you still have to pay to put the boat in Anchorage, but it uh, might be worth for a few days. There's a lot of wind coming tomorrow and apparently it's better to have the boat on this side of the dock. So I'm going to put the boat on this side of the dock now. This is all the epoxy resin that I had left. A liter, which should be more than enough, but it all leaked out. Great, so I only have this bottom left. The first thing I'm going to do is unbolt the shroud to see um, how big of an area I need to repair. I've had months of itchy skin due to fiberglass rest in the clothing and now I have to grind it inside the boat. So I'm going to do my best, once I start doing that, to not make a mess of it. This looks like a previous repair. If you see here, this is a mat. So this side, they had a quite a wide mat. But here, I don't know why this thing is here, but they only use a short piece of mat and that just wasn't strong enough and came loose. <laughs> If you want to fix this the right way, I would disattach the whole knee, clean the whole thing up, then I put a epoxy in between, put it back, 
um, take all the paint off on the outside, which I which I will do, and then put matting over it on the outside. The thing is, epoxy is not available here, so I have to think in very strong solutions for now. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grind this piece off, and then I can see how big the hole is. And then I'm actually gonna try to fill it up from the back to make this strong attached to the hull again and then add matting over from here to here to make it strong and that should be good enough you might remember when i started doing my deck repair i grinded through the deck so i'm doing my best not to have that happen right now Welcome to another day in paradise. <laughs> I'm going to use this type of matting. This is a thinner matting that's really easy to cut. The matting got a bit wet, so I'm drying it now and I already cut some beer cans to mix uh, the last epoxy that I have, hope it's enough. What I still have is fiberglass chop, which are pieces of fiberglass, uh, which I can mix in the mix and then push it behind the knee. And I still have thickener, I need a bit of thickener, uh, because otherwise if it's not thick enough, the epoxy, because it's on the side, it'll just drip down. Uh, yeah, that's what I have. That's what I gotta do it with. Here it is, a mix of epoxy, fiberglass chop, and a bit of thickener. So now let's put let's fill the back up with this. So I actually have more epoxy as I thought after I mixed it up. It became quite a lot. And um, let me show you. So what I tried is to make a corner with a chop fiberglass and thickener so instead of i pushed it it's all behind it it's all filled up and a corner like this all the way from down up like uh and then when it's dry i also put two layers of matting on and then my epoxy is finished i've done some fiberglass repairs and this uh this, to me, this looks like, I don't think this will ever let go again. While the epoxy is drying, because I am super impatient and didn't take the effort to just put everything outside, I now have the joy of cleaning everything again from fiberglass dust. I mixed a slightly thickened epoxy, so at least it will not drip off the wall. I'm gonna put it on now and then uh, add the fiberglass. thing what I like about plastic boats is that when they break you just add a bit of plastic if you have it and for the future if I get to a country where I can buy epoxy I'll definitely bring a lot more this was the last epoxy I have so uh, hopefully nothing big breaks in between <laughs> the other side looks fine and I think I did a pretty decent job here I'm on the way to try to find Tony or Jesus uh, they are operator of the charter companies here, the two charter companies, and uh, I have to stitch my sail. So 
also along the loft I have some broken things like this. I'm gonna ask what it costs if they stitch it here. It's too expensive, I can just stitch it myself by hand. Also this is my jib sheet and on a trip here, this happened. I do not understand why, but uh, ropes are really difficult to buy here, almost impossible. So this will, have, this will have to last for some time. I'm back at Dream Yacht Charters and I probably found the only sailmaker here in south of Cuba. So it's going to be $60. He only wants to take dollars, no pesos, but it's the way it is. I still have 250, so that'll just set me down a little bit. Uh, he'll work on it for three hours. Yeah, I know for the country rates and everything, it might be a little overpriced, but hey, in a country like this, try to find a sailmaker. Like I probably found the only one, so I'm happy that it's going to be fixed after today. All right, let's put the seal back in and then all the major problems are fixed. Uh, there's one other foreigner arrived from Sweden and uh, he's gonna help me put the seal back in. taking a bicycle taxi ride it's 25 pesos for one dollar so official rate if you pay by credit card that's what you get if you go on the street you change it you get a hundred for one dollar uh, so that means things become four times as cheap so that's what we're gonna do first and then I have uh, some pesos and uh, hopefully that's enough for uh, my time in uh, Cuba this is Ulf, and Ulf yeah. is here on uh, the sailboat that I just uh, that you just saw. Mm -hmm. A Swedish sailboat, Sweet. Cuba. Okay. What's your name? Jordan. Jordan is our taxi driver for today, and uh, Lamborghini Cubano. And you know everything about football. Memphis Depay. <laughs> This, this line here, these people only wait for this shop, which only has water. Only, only bottled water. So we ended the trip, I got in a huge fight with a taxi driver. I know that this trip is about $2, so I wanted to give him 200, where we have to pay two and a half dollar for, and he got in a huge fight, and he's like, yeah, I called the police, blah, blah, blah. He wanted to have like $20, well now, Two and a half dollar is two hundred pesos, but after this is finished and I have to go to the bank, this two hundred pesos is twelve dollars. So I'd be giving him twelve dollar, and it's like, like, are you kidding me? And then I eventually we gave him three hundred, and he kept shouting to me. I'm like, well, you know what? You can take it or leave it. I'm I'm tired of being ripped off. It's that's that's I don't I don't like that. You know, like, come on, just. Just be somewhat honest. I understand that as a tourist that I have to pay a little bit more, but don't overcharge me five times as much. I, like, no, don't do that.